As covered in the lectures, the location of poles and zeros in the S-plane determines whether the system is stable or how well the system performs in terms of overshoot, response time, and other parameters. Control systems are often designed simply by assigning specific values to the poles and zeros of the system depending on the desired performance. Thus, it is very important to determine where poles should be located in the S-plane to meet these requirements. This is the objective of this exercise. Here, instead of specifying performance, a desired damping ratio and natural frequency are given instead, which, as we know, are derived from these other requirements. For instance, in A, we want the damping ratio of a system to be comprised between 0.6 and 0.8, and you want the natural frequency to be less than 10 radians per second. We could have specified this performance in terms of overshoot and the damping ratio from which these parameters can be derived. Let's now identify the locations in the S-plane that will meet this requirement. We can start with the natural frequency. We know that the natural frequency is the distance that connects the pole to the origin of the S-plane, and you want that to be less than 10 radians per second. If you now specify a circle such as this one, the radius of that circle is the distance from the pole to the origin. So if a pole is located here, this distance is omega n is the natural frequency. If you now define the radius of this circle to be 10 radians per second, and you are within this circle, then we know that the natural frequency is less than 10 radians per second, and that satisfies the requirement omega n less or equal to 10. We have a second requirement. The damping ratio needs to be comprised between 0.6 and 0.8. If you place a pole again on the plane, and you now connect the pole to the origin, the angle of that line, theta, depends on the damping ratio. Theta is equal to the inverse sine of zeta. So if zeta is 0.6, then theta is the inverse sine of 0.6, that is 36 degrees. And when zeta is 0.8, then the angle will be 53 degrees. We can now trace lines with the angles that we just calculated. The first one here is 36 degrees with the imaginary axis, and the second one is 53 degrees. Now, if you want our damping ratio to be between 0.6 and 0.8, the damping ratio needs to be within these two lines. We have an additional requirement that the natural frequency needs to be less than 10 radians per second. So everything that exceeds 10 radians per second does not meet our requirement. The region that satisfies both requirements at the same time is thus this part of the S-plane only. Now remember that a complex poles are conjugate numbers, which means that you have a second area with same angles of 36 degrees and 53 degrees. So the conjugate of the other area that we just specified is this area here. Now, if our poles are anywhere within the red area, then we meet the desired requirements for both the damping ratio and the natural frequency concurrently. Now, let's move to exercise B, where we change the limits of the damping ratio, and now the natural frequency is expected to be greater than 10. So again, let's define that circle with a radius of 10 radians per second, Anything that is outside of this circle now has a omega n that is greater than 10. Again, so if you're located here, this distance to the origin is omega n. For omega n to be 10, higher than 10, we need to be located outside of that circle. The damping ratio now needs to be comprised between 0.5 and 0.707. So the first angle that we have is the sine minus 1 of 0.5, that is 45 degrees. And the second one is the arc sine of 0 0.707. This gives 30 degrees. We can now specify the lines that will delineate the range of zeta. And again, because we have complex conjugates, this is symmetric with respect to the real axis. The angle of the first line here is 30 degrees, and the angle of the second line is 45 degrees. Now, where are the poles located to satisfy these requirements? We want the damping ratio to be comprised between 0.5 and 0.7. So clearly, we are, again, within these two lines. 
Now we want the natural frequency to be greater than 10. So this area here does not satisfy the requirement. And as long as the poles are located in these areas, we meet the desired requirements for both damping ratio and natural frequency. Now let's consider a different problem where you have a range for the natural frequency and you have only one consideration for zeta. That is, a zeta needs to be greater than 0 0.5. Zeta greater than 0 0.5 implies an angle of the line that limits zeta of 30 degrees. Now when you look at omega n, we want it to be comprised between 5 and 10. So now we have two limits. Here we have the first one and here we have the second one. The first one has a radius of 5 radians per second and the second one has a radius of 10 radians per second. Now we can consider the damping ratio as well. And you have two lines for the damping ratio at an angle of 30 degrees with respect to the imaginary axis. Now let's look at our requirements. If you start with the natural frequency, we want, we want it to be between 5 and 10. So clearly we are, we are between the two circles in this area. If you now want to limit the damping ratio to something greater than 0 0.5, then this is the area that meets both requirements. And again, because you have complex conjugates, we need to select the conjugate area as well. As long as the poles are located within the blue area, we meet both design requirements. Now let's try this exercise again. For omega n, we have the same condition. So here is our 5 radians per second radius, and here is our 10 radians per second radius. The angle of the lines for the damping ratio is simply sine negative 1 of 0 0.707, that is 45 degrees. Now let's put our 45 degree lines here, and let's find the area that meets the design requirements. We again want to be between 5 and 10. So here is our 5 radius line and 10, and you want the damping ratio to be less than 0 0.707. So we need the angle to be less than 45 degrees. So this is one area and this is the other area. So long as the poles are located within these two, then we meet the, the design requirements. Notice that we are stopping it here because if you go beyond the imaginary axis, now the damping ratio becomes negative and the system becomes unstable. In the last example, the desired natural frequency is less than six radians per second. So here is our limit of six radians per second. And the angle for the damping ratio will be sine minus 1 of 0 0.6, that is approximately 36 degrees. So here is one line, and here is the complementary line, both at 36 degrees. We want the damping ratio to be greater than 0 0.6, so we need an angle that is greater than 36 degrees, and the natural frequency of less than 6 radians per second. So the area that meets both requirements is the green area right here.